As the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, progresses, the Department of Health and Human Services is taking away the religious freedom that all Americans are guaranteed by the First Amendment by requiring that all employers, regardless of religious conscience, provide all forms of contraception to their employees and even to minors without the knowledge of their parents. In response to this assault on the Constitution, Catholic leaders are stepping up and are searching for what can be done within the bounds of the law to deliver quality health care that follows the ethical and religious directives for Catholic health care services. The Make Straight the Pathway Conference was held in Houston, Texas in March of 2013 on the campus of the University of St. Thomas to shed light on the critical problem of providing quality health care and protecting everyone's religious freedoms. Welcome to the Make Straight the Pathway Conference. Uh, this is the third of a series of conferences to, in fact, make straight the pathway to develop uh, an integrated and unified solution for Catholic health care in light of the reforms necessary in light of what's taking place in uh, health care in the United States today with the Accountable Care Act. Uh, I want to call your attention to the program, and we're going to follow the program. Uh, as closely as we can. Uh, I do want to mention to you that we are deeply uh, indebted to our hosts, uh, particularly the University of St. Thomas, uh, the Christus Medicus Foundation, the John Paul II Life Center of Austin, Texas, and uh, His Eminence Cardinal Daniel DiNardo and the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. Uh, Cardinal DiNardo has been very helpful in making this conference happen. Uh, he planned to be here to be the celebrant at the Mass this evening. Uh, he has other business pending uh, in Rome, and uh, so he's a very busy man. And then uh, uh, the auxiliary bishop, Bishop Schilt, uh, was planning to be with us uh, in the Cardinal's absence, and he's in the hospital of pneumonia. So uh, we will be uh, represented by two wonderful priests this evening that can celebrate uh, the Mass. Uh, I, I do want to call your attention to our co-sponsors listed on the front of the of, of your program. Uh, each one of them has played a significant role, and we thank them very much uh, for their assistance. I'm, I'm particularly reminded of the uh, scripture from Jeremiah 1, 4, and 5. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. Uh, this uh, resonates deeply with me. Uh, you'll hear me talk about that several times uh, throughout this conference. But I think it's something for us to all uh, think, think deeply about because what we're here to talk about is life and life from conception to natural death. Uh, we're particularly blessed to have had the leadership of an individual who you will also hear from numerous times during the conference, but I want to take this opportunity to recognize him and <clears throat> to let you know the leadership he has demonstrated and the kind of leadership that each of us has a challenge to undertake, and, and that is Mike O'Day. And Mike, if you'd please stand up. Uh, Mike is the founder and president of the Christus Medicus Foundation, and his uh, better half, Peggy, is here somewhere, and, and the, the two of them have, uh, have, have worked uh, tirelessly. And, and when this issue that we now call the HHS mandate was only a concept, uh, Mike saw this on the horizon. And when it came before the Institute of Medicine, and the Institute of Medicine started talking about it, uh, Mike was there. Uh, sounding the alarm, sounding the, the fact that uh, they were talking about uh, developing preventative care uh, in such a way that preventative care would be defined uh, as giving uh, natural birth uh, or preventing natural birth. Uh, so Mike has, uh, has led the clarion call and in fact uh, is leading the way in making straight the pathway. 
uh, you'll see in your program that, that we have three major purposes for the conference, and that is to educate, uh, to educate uh, at the public policy level. Uh, we have some wonderful speakers uh, who will talk specifically about that and what you can do to, uh, to promote and protect religious freedom. Uh, we want to develop culture of life primary care medical centers, and we want to establish and talk about establishing a national Catholic health plan and what that can do to serve all in relation to religious freedom and the ability to run uh, Catholic medical centers. So as, as we start today, what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to give you an overview of this morning's program. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, David Barton of Wall Builders, and talk, who will talk about the separation of church and state and the rights of conscience. He'll be followed by Richard Darflinger, uh, a eminent leader uh, in the pro-life movement and, uh, and with his work with the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. We're so delighted to have Richard here. Uh, we'll talk about current threats to religious liberty and defending freedom of conscience uh, by Jeff Mateer of the Liberty Institute. And the Liberty Institute is leading the way in some of the specific court challenges uh, to the HHS mandate. We'll change our program schedule just a little bit, and at 10 a.m. we'll take our break. And then when we resume, uh, we'll talk about state religious freedom issues with Jonathan Sines of, the te of Texas Values. And then we'll move into the role of faithful citizens in a diminished public square with Doug Olmixon representing the Texas State Council Knights of Columbus and an outstanding uh, lawyer here in Texas. And then we'll talk about the Affordable Care Act and its impact on Texas with Jeff Patterson and the Texas Catholic Conference. We'll have a panel discussion uh, following that. So it's uh, particularly my pleasure to present our first presenter. And I've had the pleasure, Pat and I have, uh, to work with David Barton over the last uh, six, seven, almost eight years now. And David is a, an individual who makes an impact. And when we're talking about what we can do and what other individuals can do, we, we look for people who shine that light uh, around others and they give a path to follow. And David is just such an individual in his role as the founder of Wall Builders and its historical significance. Uh, if you've ever had the opportunity to go through the uh, United States Capitol and go through the Hall of Statues and the, the paintings there, if you ever have a chance to do that with David Barton and his uh, candlelight tour of the Capitol, it's uh, something you'll remember forever. So uh, we're thankful for David being here. We're thankful for his leadership thankful for his commitment to his faith and, and his commitment uh, to, to protecting life. And with that, David, uh, please come forward. Hi, I'm Jeff Gardner, and on behalf of the John Paul II Life Center and the Christus Medicus Foundation, thank you for watching this presentation. The need for more crisis pregnancy centers and Christ-centered medical practices throughout the United States is critical and ongoing and we'd like to encourage you to get involved. Before you do, there are a couple of important takeaways that we'd like to leave you with. First and foremost, develop a strong and clear vision of what it is you want to create. Be sure that you understand the distinctions between a crisis pregnancy center, a family practice clinic, an OBGYN clinic, a multidisciplinary medical practice, or a sonogram center. Familiarize yourself, too, with the not-for-profit laws as they pertain to health care in your state. John Paul II Life Center operates within the state of Texas. Your laws may vary. Also, before you begin either to explore a crisis pregnancy center or a Christ-centered medical practice, get the blessing of your bishop. Get a committed and unified board. If you can, get the cooperation of your local Catholic hospital. Organize and identify physicians who can be key in helping you getting your project off the ground. Develop a strategic plan, and within it, include the right professionals, those that you'll need to advise you in all aspects of your endeavor. Familiarize yourself with the fundamentals of fundraising, communication, and education 
Everyone involved does not need to know how to do everything, but everyone involved should know about everything that needs to be done. To open a Christ-centered medical practice, understand the financial operations of a clinic. When considering the financial arrangements needed to establish a clinic, it has been our experience that the first year costs, including salaries, is a minimum of $500,000 and can be supported by a recruitment agreement for a physician with a cooperating hospital. Also, care should be taken to consult with an appropriate practice management company to assist you in setting up the medical clinic and to get the correct assistance with licensing, credentialing for hospital privileges, and third-party contracts, as well as billing and collections with the best electronic medical records and healthcare information technology available. Right now, a national platform is under development to include a service company that will help take advantage of economies of scale so medical clinics and pro-life centers across the United States can be created. For more information, please contact us at Kimberly at jpiilifecenter.org. That's Kimberly at jpiilifecenter.org.